One of the first things Alberta Premier Jason Kenney did after he was elected was to appoint a panel to identify the quote, difficult decisions his United Conservative government was going to have to make to get Alberta's finances back on track, free spending, and get out of financial difficulties. But the question has been, just how bad is the financial situation? Well, if the status quo stays the same, in 2019 to 20, Alberta will face a $7.7 billion deficit. And between 2008-2009 and 2018-19, just to show you how things have changed, the province went from having nearly $32 billion in financial assets to having $27.5 billion in net debt. In fact, one of Jason Kenney's biggest promises to the electorate was that he was going to clean up the province's finances. And Albertans must have liked that. They elected his party by a landslide, replacing the new Democratic Party in government. But the idea right now is that if Alberta is going to reach a balanced budget by 2023-24, the government needs to stop spending. The government needs to reduce operating costs to the tune of $600 million, or about a 1.2% decrease in spending. Now, capital costs, that's grants, say, to cities, or project investments, they also need to be reduced by hundreds of millions of dollars over the next several years. Well, four months after Kenny struck this panel, the panel has returned and it has delivered its report. It's called the McKinnon Report, and it's a doozy. There is a lot of information in here, a lot of information about Alberta's finances, a lot of options for cuts and changes to the way the government might deliver services to Albertans. And there's so much in it, but there are a lot of basics from this that you should be aware of. The report starts with a couple of pretty shocking facts, actually. The Alberta government's per capita spending has been above the Canadian average for about 25 years. So if you put a number on that, what that actually looks like is for each man, woman, and child in the province, Alberta spends about $2,000 more compared to the Canadian average. Now what that means is that the panel figured if Alberta reduced its per capita spending to the average amongst other provinces, they use BC, Ontario, and Quebec as examples, it would actually save more than $10 billion per year for the government. Now, the panel does anticipate that this report will get blowback from those who are believers in big government spending. They assume that some will claim it's realistic for Alberta to spend more money than other provinces. And the reasons for that basically are that A, the cost of living is higher in Alberta, so spending must be higher. So public sector salaries, for example, need to compete with higher private sector salaries. And B, that we need to spend more on things like healthcare and things like education, or else those who are in need of medical care and those in the school system will suffer. But what the panel actually says is that neither of these objections hold up to scrutiny. It actually takes these claims apart in fairly painstaking detail. So let's take healthcare, for example, because that's a big one. It costs a lot of money. It accounts for about 40% of the Alberta government's spending each year. And the Alberta healthcare system spends about $5,300 per Albertan each year. But over in Ontario, the government spends about $3,700 per person. So the question is, do Albertans get $1,600 worth of better care each year? And the answer kind of seems to be no. Wait times are higher in Alberta than BC, Ontario, and Quebec. Our infant mortality rates don't fare very well either, actually. So healthcare, despite the fact that we're paying more, doesn't seem to be giving us more back in services. Or education. The panel found that a lot of money in Alberta goes to the administration of the education system as opposed to into the classroom, as it does in other provinces. And also shockingly, it found that in Alberta's post-secondary institutions, 9 out of 26 of them have graduation rates of less than 60%. In other words, more than a third of all the students in our universities, colleges, and technical schools nearly half of the students aren't actually finishing what they've started. And all along, the government is subsidizing that. There are some other highlights in this report too, and one of them is that the government is going to have to review everything that it does to see if it can be done more efficiently by the private sector, according to the panelists who reported back here. That's the sort of thing that will excite small government proponents for sure. And instead of continuing the history of spending on big, shiny new infrastructure projects, the panel says it would actually be better to use the money to repair the older stuff that already exists. This seems like pretty logical stuff, a lot of people would say. And it supports a plan to make Alberta more business friendly. Things like tax cuts and other measures that will bring back private investment, bring those levels back up to pre-recession levels. But Kenny had actually already made some promises to do just that. So this is rehashing some of those things. 
What's really important to remember is that Kenny doesn't need to accept all or even any of these recommendations. It's up to him. So it's worth noting that the report focuses only on government spending. It doesn't focus on revenue. But the panel did admit that these spending reforms, they don't mean that the province might not have to look at its other problem, which is the roller coaster of resource revenues alongside energy prices that really make it difficult to budget here. But clearly, this is the first step for a government that wants to get back into the black on its spending. This would appear to be a step-by-step -step plan to get there, but that's if the Alberta Conservatives are willing to take it.